It's time we all got to do some exoplanet hunting. Welcome to SETI Astro. So as always, if you haven't gotten the latest version of SETI Astro Suite, head over to my website, SETIastro.com, under Astro Program, SETI Astro Suite. Up to version 2.19, click Get It Here. And it'll take you to the GitHub repository where you can get the latest version. All right, after you open the new version, you're gonna see a new icon over here. This is the exoplanet transient detector. It's also under star stuff. So if we click that, it's gonna open up a, a new screen for us. Now it runs in two modes. You could run it in with already aligned subs. So this is if you have a folder with registered images, let's say you, you stacked a bunch of things in PixInsight or Serial or Study Astro Suite and you have all your uh, registered images still, you could utilize them in here. Or if you click raw subs, it gives you the option to load in a master dark, a master flat, and load in your raw subs. When you're doing um, searches like this for exoplanets and stuff, you're gonna want just a single filter because once you start mixing and matching, uh, as it's looking at the light curve, right, a red channel is going to look different than a blue channel if you have a mono camera. So that's something to keep in mind. And also for the raw subs, you're gonna load them and then calibrate and align all the subs, and then we can measure it. So let's just uh, work with align subs for right now. There's also um, some more advanced features right away here too. Uh, there's the D-trend option. It's defaulted to quadratic. Uh, that's going to probably give you the, the, the best detrending in this particular application. There's also linear and none if you want to choose those. If you did go ahead and do all your raw subs and calibrated them and aligned them, it gives you the option to save all your aligned frames so you could just use them later. I also want to say that this works with XISF files. So if you do have a bunch of registered XISF files from PixInsight, you could absolutely use them in here. And then there's a little settings here for the photometry and analysis settings. A lot of, lot of more technical details in here. We are running on an ensemble photometry. So it's actually looking at the fluxes of the, in this case, 10 is the variable there. The 10 stars that most closely match the, the target star. And then there's a whole bunch of things here for the analysis for the LS and BLS parameters. We'll get into that more. So the very first thing to do is load up some aligned subs. You're also gonna want them all from the same night. Um, multiple nights, you, you can do that. It's, it does more complications though. So I would recommend, especially if you've never done this kind of stuff before and you're getting your feet wet, single night, single filter. And you can see I'm actually using registered images from PixInsight. So I'm just gonna select the ones I, I know were from that single night it's going to go through and load them and you can see the terminal window is just going crazy as it's doing that it doesn't take them too long to load at this point the only thing left to do is click measure and photometry if these were raw subs then you'd you'd click calibrate and align so i'm going to click measure and photometry now for measuring the frames it does spin up a number of threads in the background to do a bunch of multi-thread operations this just takes a bit of time, right? Uh, it has to detect and measure all the stars in your image. It rejects oversaturated stars, two dim stars. There, there's a lot going on in the background here for the, the measured frame, so just, just let it run. Now something really cool is gonna happen when it starts running the photometry, it's actually gonna push a reference frame from that whole stack to what's in my image and fire off the blind solver. So that way when our photometry here is done, we'll have a plate solved image in what's in my image that we could also use to help identify objects in our image all at the same time. All right, the photometry is done. It's going to open a separate window here. This is the stars overlay window. This is all the stars that it detected that were suitable to actually get light curves off of. You can see the really, really dim ones aren't going to be part of that. And also there is a setting. There's a setting to ignore so much of the border around in settings here. So border fraction, 
if you want to change that, you can you can change it absolutely. But by default, it ignores 10% of the border all the way around. Because usually near the border when you're dithering and aligning and stuff, there, there could just be all sorts of issues near the border. You could even see down here, there's, there's some issues down here with the border. Now, what you're going to also notice is some of these stars are highlighted yellow right away. And that has to do with the dip threshold. This is in parts per thousand. So this is going to highlight any stars it detects where the light curve has multiple points that are, in this case, 20 parts per thousand off the, the flux line. So here's a bunch of fluxes for all these different stars. You could also click on the stars over here and it will show you the, the curves for all them. And you will notice the relative flux over here will also auto adjust the, the Y axis. And these are very narrow ranges, right? As you would expect, we're looking for transits. They're gonna be very, very small deviations from the normalized flux of the star. But these highlighted ones have ones that are outside that that range that we have set, the, the dip threshold range. The other thing you could do is you could highlight more than one of these items at a time. You could just click and drag and you could highlight a bunch of them. You can control click different areas and highlight different ones. You could do something crazy like a shift click the whole column and then you're probably gonna have to give it a second, but it's going to overlay all the light curves so you could actually see what's going on with, with a lot of them. You can see the vast bulk of all the stars here just live right in this very narrow range, all within half a percent deviation from norm. None of those are flagged. And then you have some other stars with some more scatter to them for sure. And then something when I was first running this that caught my attention was this yellow curve in the background. So as you're running through these, you'll see the colors change, which will help you identify where, where in your tree box they live. And it is the star 30 here, looks like this. And we can find it, it's, it's right here in our image. And I spent hours trying to debug why this curve was not detrending properly. You know, we have it on a quadratic detrend. Everything else detrends great. What is going on? Why is this not detrending? Turns out it is detrended. This is the data. I should have trusted the dang program. This is the the abnormal one in this this whole set of images here. It's this star, it is completely abnormal. If you look at all the other flux around it and all these other stars, here's all the other fluxes and then you got this guy with this weird huge curve. So this would be a great example of now we could hop over to what's in my image, it's already up, it's already plate solved and we could just find the same star, try to get them to the same zoom so it's easier to see. The star is right here. Let's let's figure out what the star is. All right, if it, it found the star for us, it's right here. It's this uh, two mask designator here. So we can double click that now. And it's gonna open the Simbad repository for the star. And you can see right here, it's it's P-U-L. If you do want to look that up, you can click the little question there, type in P-U-L. It's a pulsating variable star. No wonder this object, pulsating variable, has this ridiculous shape to it. The star is actually intrinsically getting brighter and starting to dim over the course of the, the three hours I was I was imaging that night. So that's, that's the kind of stuff you could do with this beyond looking for planets. It's highlighting the ones it thinks is interesting for you to try to look at. And then since I automatically open what's in my image and run the plate solver immediately, it helps you identify what the actual image is that you're looking at. There are some more things you could do here. Once you have a interesting light profile or a light curve you can click analyze star and that's gonna fire off this other window here that does a couple different things for us it's going to do i'm only going to say it one time loam scargle 
<laughs> it's it's like a fast Fourier transform looking at frequencies, but it could be used with data that may, may not be consistent across time, where you may have a couple images at one part of the evening and then maybe a half hour later there's some more images, whatever. This is helps utilize those kind of images. The other thing it does is a box of lead squares. That's here. These all these graphs you can move and you know control, zoom in and, and all sorts of different things. It also utilizes the data from the box of least squares if it actually determines some kind of a phase from the box of least squares. It does use that phase then fed into the phase folded diagram down here. So if this actually saw a transit in this time, you would see a, a dip in this yellow bar. In this case, this there's I mean there's no transit here in the data, it's just really scattered. But that's where you would end up seeing it here. If we had a, a nice dip in there and come back up, the box of least squares diagram in the middle would have a nice peak wherever that was for that period. And then it would feed that into the phase folded diagram and be able to represent the actual transit and uh, the detection for it there. If you do find something interesting and you want to pass these light curves on to somebody else, you can click the export CSV fits. It gives you the option of saving it as a FITS or a CSV file. When you do that, it's going to save the date and time for the, the mid the mid transient of your light curve here, along with all the flux levels for all the single light curves for all the stars. And if you save it as a FITS file, it's going to have a, a whole bunch of other information for the FITS header, including your telescope data and all that stuff that was from your FITS headers from the files, it actually will import that along with some, some other information as well. So uh, if you do find something interesting and you do want to share it with maybe somebody more in the know in the exoplanet community, there is a way to just export these curves out. Some other settings you may, may play with. So we talked about the, the border fraction, the SAP detection sigma. So Right now, this is the star needs to be five sigma higher than the background noise uh, in order for it to be detected. You can play with this. You can lower it or raise it. Again, there's built-in stuff in there that if the star is too saturated, it's not even going to look at it because of all the nonlinearity that happens in your sensor as it starts becoming saturated. It's, it's really not usable for uh, this kind of photometry where we're looking for exoplanets or flares or, or anything like that. Again, the ensemble normalization is 10. So for each star, it's going to look at the 10 stars with the closest flux to, to normalize them. You can adjust this up or down. If you really want to play with some of the analysis period search options in here, you can. And they're going to directly alter how like the, the box elite squares or Loam Scargle is going to be manipulated in there. Specifically, if you want to look for more periods, you'd go from a thousand to like 5,000 there. And the number of durations you may want to take up to 50. It's going to make the analysis longer, but it's going to cover a broader breadth of possible transient times. And then you can also play with the dip threshold amount. Here you can see as you lower it more and more and more, obviously you're going to get more items that are now, you know, five parts per thousand outside of the, the norm. It's just, it's just a rough guide to help you in determining what you think is going to be important and special in your image. And with most of my tools, this is, this is my first go at it, right? I want to build in a lot better dip threshold detectors and flare detectors, uh, where instead of looking at just needing a few points below the threshold to actually flag it, maybe build in some, some moving average detection and, and things like that to, to really help with it. Also, eventually I want to make the analysis a lot more robust, uh, such that we can do a lot more detailed analysis within SETI Astro Suite as well. But I think getting this out in the hands of everybody, democratizing the search for exoplanets and supernova kicking off and flares and variability stars, all that kind of stuff I think will be fun because you already have the data. You've already taken all your subs. You've already registered it more than likely. And if you didn't, you could just register it here quick. You might as well see what's in there. 
and you may you may be surprised you may just run across something in a random image like i did here where this is this is a true light curve changing on a star because it's a pulsating variable star and just something more to do something more to dig into and you may help discover um you know a transiting exoplanet out there you didn't even think was possible with you know your backyard setup so i hope everybody gets into this fiddles around with it if you see something cool and unusual let us know we also have in the discord uh lynn beats uh i had a video with him before as well so reach out to him if you have some uh interest in exoplanet hunting there's a whole little like sub discord to my discord about exoplanet hunting they're always looking for more telescope time pointing to the heavens to help look for planets please comment like and subscribe